Alaba, 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 sea tu nombre glorificado. Oh, gloria a Dios, sea tu nombre glorificado. And he's got to have no other family there. There can be no other family there. He's in his bright orange jumpsuit, shackled from top to bottom. And oh, before he goes in that time, you got 15 minutes. Oh, and I said to myself, you know, thank God that I have the freedom that I have. Oh, the pastor's talking about freedom. Thank God that I have the freedom that I have. That if, you know, I can oh, go see my family or something wants to happen, I don't have to worry about that. I just have 15 minutes to see them. You know, there's people out there that don't have the liberty to do what they want to do. And there's people out there that don't have the liberty to praise God. And here we are that we do have the liberty and we don't, we don't want to do it. We don't want to do it and it's a shame. So I just want to thank God. And sometimes we have to be, take a step back and recognize that we have those opportunities and we need to be thankful to God. We get caught up with all the things in the world and all our problems and all our things and we get distracted. And then all of a sudden you see a bird chirp or, or you look up in the sky and you look up and you see this, the, the thunder and you say, wow, God is real. And you know, I was, I was, I was, God is so good because he confirmed the message through my father. And when, he, when I start to talk about it, you'll see how. And I'm showing my mother in the back, but I couldn't. I was like, wow, God is so good. And I, I was, God is so good that that just goes to show me that the message is for somebody here. Come on. Exactly what he was talking about is the message that God had given me. Amen. And, uh, I just ask that you guys pray for Miriam and, and, and Leilani. They weren't feeling too good today. So I didn't want to stick him out of the rain. <coughs> Mary was trying to come and I just told her, you know, she wasn't feeling good at all. And I just told her, you know, just stay home and relax because I know you're not feeling well. She's like, I want to go oh, see you preach. I said, don't alma, worry, I know Domingo will have it on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> 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 um, let's open our Bibles to Romans sí, chapter 1 verse 20. Romanos capítulo 1. Versículo 20. Oh, gloria a Dios. When you have it, please say amen. No, Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Glorificado. Yes, and for those of you who don't know, I will be speaking in English. Praise God. Yes. Yes. Believe it or not, English is my first language. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> 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 well, you all have to be saved. Amen. 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 Oh, the word is read in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the church says... Amen. 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 See, my thing is all your fault. <laughs> For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Amen. I'm going to ask that the... Uh, Pastor, go ahead and leave. Father God, we thank you. We worship and we praise you for your word. We ask you this moment, Lord Father, that you bless Brother Alex, oh Lord Father God. We ask you to anoint him with a special anointing that you already have done, oh Lord Father God, from the beginning of time that you have given him this message. We ask you, Lord Father God, that you allow us the understanding revelation, oh Lord Father God, of your word through your Holy Spirit. We ask this in your name, sweet Jesus. Amen. 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 You, you may all be seated. So put us the other day, um, I think it was Sunday or Monday, I woke up and um, I was I was dreaming that I was preaching. And um, I don't even remember what the preaching was. I just remember that at the end of the preaching that I said these three words and the church just went crazy. And the, the and this is this is why it, it just bugs me out when I heard him talking here because the, the, the title of the preaching is God is Real. And I remember when I was preaching that I said those words at the ending of the preaching and I said that and it just, the church went crazy. And I, I woke up that morning and I'm not a type of person that really remembers a lot of what I dream. So when I, when I woke up, I was like, wow, it just stuck with me. And I just went into the Bible and I knew that that's what the message was that God had for me. And then when I heard um, the pastor speaking, I just, it just all came together. And uh, you know, my father was talking about people who don't believe in the word. And something that he said is, you have to prove things with a lot of these people with what makes sense to them. You know, if you tell somebody one plus one equals two, that makes sense. Now, if you get into MC squared and all those things, people are like, you know, I might not understand what you're saying. So you got to break it down for some people for it to make sense. 
And you know, ever since, ever since you know, scientists they started making these hypotheses. They're convinced that our universe began with one enormous explosion of energy and light, which we, which people call the Big Bang. For those of you young guys who watch that show, this was the singular. They believe this was the singular start to everything that exists. The beginning of the universe, the start of space, and even the initial start of time itself. Now stick with me. It sounds a little strange, but I'm going somewhere with this. I can already see some people's eyes glazing over. <laughs> see that? I told you, one plus one is two. They can stick with that. As soon as I said something else, glazed eyes. But stick with me. Here, I'm going to get a little more in depth, so try to stay with me. Astrophysicist Robert Jastrow, a self-described agnostic, stated the seed of everything that has happened in the universe was planted in that first instant. Every star, every planet, every living creature in the universe came into being as a result of the events that were set in motion in the moment of the cosmic explosion. More blades. Okay. The universe flashed into being and we cannot find out what caused that to happen is what he also said. Steven Weinberg, a Nobel laureate in physics, said at the moment of this explosion, the universe was about 100,000 million degrees centigrade and the universe was filled with light. The universe has not always existed, it had a start. And they asked him, what caused that start? And he didn't have an explanation. And nobody, no scientists have an explanation for the explosion of light and matter. So they come up with a theory, and they convince you that this theory is real, but they don't have an answer as to why. So even by scientific standards, everything has a beginning, a reason, and an end, right? But even by scientific standards, they cannot explain why the beginning happened. So even they can't even complete their own hypothesis. When in the word, it gives a clear definition of how the universe came into, into being. Okay, stick with me, stick with me. Now I ask you, out of all the things that people have said and, and all these religions and all these things that could have happened, why Jesus? Why is Jesus the answer? Have, you, have anybody ever heard have somebody asked ask them that? Okay, uh, there's, there's Muslims, there's Buddhists, why, why should I believe in Jesus? What makes them any different from you? If you look throughout the major world religions, you'll, you'll find that Buddha, Muhammad, Confucius, Moses, all identi identify themselves as teachers or prophets. No, none of them ever explain themselves to be equal to God, except Jesus. That is what sets Jesus apart from all others. He said, God exists and you're looking at him. Though he talked about his Father in heaven, it was not from the position of separation, but of a very close union, unique to all. Humankind, Jesus said that anyone who has seen him has seen the Father. Anyone who believes in him believes in the Father. Amen. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. Amen. Amen. So even though these, a lot of these other religions, they teach prosperous things or, or beneficial things, None of, the, none of the people who wrote those books said, I am God. If you look at, if you look at the Torah, I'm not, excuse me, not the Torah, uh, the, Quran. the Quran, it calls Jesus the Savior. Mm -hmm. Now they'll explain what that means, how it's different from our understanding of Savior. And even if you read on, it talks about how uh, the prophet Muhammad, when he became enlightened, it was because he went into the sun. And when he was in the sun, who did he meet? Jesus and Moses. So even by their own standards, they acknowledge and they acknowledge him as as a, as almost a deity. They call him the prophet because you know they he can't say that okay yeah Jesus is the Messiah even though the book says he's the Messiah because we think different and even the Jews recognize that he was a preacher and he was a prophet. You know all these things they recognize him in these other religions and you say to yourself, well one plus one equals two, right? One plus one equals two. But then you get the people with the glazed eyes. Because it goes so, sometimes we break things down so, so big that it just loses people. He claimed attributes belonging only to God. To be able to forgive people of their sins. Free them of habits of sin. Give people a more abundant life and give them eternal life in heaven. Unlike other teachers who focus people on their words. Jesus pointed people to himself. He did not say, follow my words and you will find truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No one comes to the Father through me. Right? Amen. 
Nobody comes too far from me. Now here's where it gets a little crazy. A lot of us nowadays, knowing that these things, again I say, one plus one equals two. I tell you that, it makes sense, right? You know what's there, you felt the presence of God before. At some point or another, God has done a miracle in your life. You know that God has moved in your life before, but for some reason you just can't get it together. And a lot of us, we live our lives like God is not real. And my father was talking about the atheists, and he was talking about people who deny God with their mouth. I'm talking about the opposite. People who say with their mouth that God exists, but with our actions have become atheists. Yes. And you say, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, Brother Alex, now you're going too far. Now you're going too far. I might make a few mistakes, but I believe in God. But do you really? Now, do you really? Do you live as though God exists in your life? Because if God was right here, right now, he was on this altar right now, and he had said, you know what, you are forgiven for everything that you have done. Would you come here and still disrespect him in the house of God? Mm-hmm. Would you go outside and do things that you didn't do if you knew that when you came back here, he would still be here? No. So we, we, we say that we're living a, a, a Christian lifestyle or we're living a life for God, but are we truly really? Praise God. How would we, and like I said, how would we act if God was here in person? You know, there's a, a famous there's a famous saying that goes, the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge <laughs> Jesus with their lips and walk out the door and deny him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. Yes, right. Amen. And you hear that a lot. You hear people say, Well, and it's not that it's right, but you can say, Oh, there goes the Christian. There goes the Christian. You know, um, one of the, the, the uh, guys that uh, was here on Sunday, that was here when I preached, he's, uh, he works for the sheriff's office. So I guess he went back and he told a lot of people that I preached, right? So one of the nurses came up to me and she said, oh, I didn't know that you preached. And I said, yeah. And she said, I just want to ask forgiveness for anything that I've said bad to you or any attitude I've ever given you in the entire time that I know you. And I was like, no, you're fine. And she was like, you know, but something about you, you're just like a regular guy. And I was like, well, I only know how to be one way. <laughs> So she was like, she said, well, I can tell that you have the Spirit of God in you by the way that you are. I, she said, I'm not surprised that I heard him say that you preach. And I said, well, that's a good thing. You know, hopefully that will rub off on some other people around here. <laughs> but, Praise you know, when you, when, you, when you live a lifestyle and you, you not only you, you proclaim it with your mouth, but also you live it, it, it shows to the world. That light shines bright <laughs> to everybody that you meet, anybody that you come across. When you do things differently, when you act a different way from everybody else, when you approach situations that people normally would do something different, you go ahead and you stand firm on your beliefs. People say, wow, there's something different about that guy. You know, I don't have to come up and say, I'm a Christian, and you're doing this wrong, and the Bible says this, and the Bible says that. I don't have to do that. I do it by the way that I, the way that I live, the way that I, 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 I react. You know what? The Bible tells me that when you go to work, you should work like you're working for God. So when I go to work, I work hard. And they tell me, you know, man, you, you busting your butt over here, man. You're working four or five days by yourself. And I say, yeah, because you got to work like you're working for God. And, I, you know, I try to, and that's something that was instilled to me by my father because I saw how he worked. And I know he works very hard. Sometimes he's working two, three jobs down here. And I say, wow, I don't know how he does it. But these are things that if you have God in your life, it projects. And you don't have to go around preaching and, and pointing the finger at people because people see it. Now, if you look at the definition of an atheist, it says a person who does not acknowledge God or a deity. And you say to yourself, well, I say I, be- I believe in God because I said it. I believe it. I believe in the theory. It sounds like a great idea. You know, it sounds like something good, so I believe in that. But really, do you believe it in your heart? When you walk outside, when you meet these new people, are you really showing, when in your time of struggle, are you really showing that you believe in God? I looked up, um, when I looked up the definition of atheist, I looked up the, any synonyms, or, you know, words that are, are similar or can you be used to substitute for atheist. And one of the words that I found there was heathen. And I looked up, I looked up the definition of heathen. Heathen is a person, heathen is a, a non believer of Christ. So, by the definition, a, a heathen is a person who doesn't believe in Christ. Now, if you believe in Christ, right, if I know that God is real, if I felt God in my life, 
and God has touched me, and the Lord has revealed to me that the way to be a good Christian is to live through the word, right? And his mandates through the word. If I'm not obeying those mandates, if I'm not doing what the Lord has called me to do, if I'm doing the complete opposite of what it tells me to do, am I not a heathen? 